I'd like to call this meeting to the, of the whole to order. It's 6.30, and the first order of business is the Pledge of Allegiance. Second, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? So carried. Uh, everybody had a chance to review your minutes? Any corrections, deletions, anything else? Make a motion then. Motion to approve. Got a motion to approve in the second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? So carried. The reviews, uh, everybody have a chance to uh, review the claims for April 2019? Any Issues on them? Any, any, any that you want to talk about? I see you paid small town at the school. What was that? I, I didn't hear that. Um, small town tech for doing the whole Wi Fi upgrade. Okay. At the meeting, yeah. yeah. Okay. That's the motion to approve. Or the motion to approve. We have a motion to approve the accounts balances or the claims for April 2019. You get a second. I'll second it. We have a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So carried. Uh, also to review the account balance and financial statements for the general and water sewer and water funds for April 30th. Motion to table. I'll second. We have a recommendation and, and a second to table. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So Kerry, this time I'd like to ask the park superintendent to step up here, please. Thank you very much. And I have some handouts that were provided electronically too, just in case people didn't get them. You can pass those down. Oh, you didn't get color. Oh, you didn't? No. Black and white. An upgrade. Right? <laughs> yeah. Thank you for allowing me time on your agenda tonight. I'm Bob DeGrosse. I'm the superintendent of Voyagers National Park, headquartered at 360 Highway 11 East in International Falls. And I'm coming before the group today to talk about two topics. Um, one, both of them FYIs, or uh, just informational topics, but one of them, um, uh, I just want to assure the uh, council's uh, support for it as well, even though there's more details to be developed in the future and things. So that one is, um, first of all, let me say that the park works very closely with an organization that's called the Heart of the Continent Partnership. And the Heart of the Continent Partnership is a coalition of public land managers, municipalities, and interested uh, organizations within the Arrowhead region of uh, northeastern Minnesota and portions of northwestern Ontario. And it's a ge geotourism uh, regional area that is um, is identified as a working group and things. It's very much like the crown of the continent geotourism uh, tourism area that's out in the Rockies and things and National Geographic has created these areas around the country. The purpose of the organization is to just have a con uh, or to facilitate a conversation amongst these different groups and talk about things that could be done to help draw attention to the geotourism region and um, improve quality of life for our residents but also encourage visitation to the area. So two things that we're working on. The first is through the summer of 2019, we're coordinating a variety of events that they're calling the Bike the Heart opportunities. And this is a activity to encourage again local residents to recognize the biking opportunities that we have, but also to try to encourage uh, visitors to come to the area and take advantage of our biking opportunities. So working with a very small group of volunteers, we're trying to coordinate an event for the International Falls area uh, on September 28th. And we're looking at three primary rides. 
The first ride is a um, potential race, but it might be a self-timed race slash fun run. And that is going to be from the International Falls area um, down to Little Fork, across to Ray, and then back to International Falls. And it's a 55-mile loop. Believe it or not, there's people out there who do that. I will not be riding that opportunity, but <laughs> others will. Um, yeah. <laughs> Okay, yeah, and then we have two shorter ones. One, uh, both of the shorter opportunities are encouraging people to use our bike path that we have through our area here. Um, we're still trying to determine where the starting point of this uh, activity is going to be. Should it be at the park headquarters? Should it be at Smoky Bear Park? It will depend upon how many people are, are registering and showing interest in it. The second ride is a 25 mile round trip that goes and it utilizes the bike path that we have established here all the way out to the Rainy Lake Visitor Center. And then the third ride that I'm hoping that the council here will support is leaving from wherever the starting point is and basically going down the bike path, looping through Rainier and then back to the starting point, which provides a shorter opportunity of about 10 miles or so. So we're just looking uh, to see that all of the municipalities that are gonna be affected by this are are okay with us moving forward with it. First of all, uh, we realize that we have a lot of uh, organization in terms of logistics that we have to resolve, um, health and safety considerations, water stations, chase vehicles, and things like that. But again, we are working on those uh, details and logistical uh, aspects of it. Matter of fact, I'm having a meeting with the volunteer group that's organizing this on Friday of this week. So, so that's the one activity that I wanted you to be aware of. The second is that the uh, land management agencies within the heart of the continent, which are primarily uh, Voyagers National Park, Superior National Forest with the Boundary Water Canoe Area, and Quetico Provincial Park in Ant Ontario, as well as a variety of other provincial parks to the east of Quetico. Um, the parks are going to be working over the next year or two to seek dark sky park designation through the International Dark Sky Association. And what this designation is, is really and truly just a commitment by the park managers to assure that whatever facilities that we have and are responsible for, that we're mindful of the night lighting um, aspects of those facilities to assure that we minimize it to the greatest amount possible while still providing reasonable uh, protection and, and light pathway opportunities and things. So if we, as we move forward with this, and by the way, we'll be having an intern coming and working with us this summer to help us develop our plans. Um, once each of the park areas are designated by the International Dark Sky Association, the hope is that they will recognize us as an international dark sky region. And as I understand it, if they provide us that designation, we will be the first truly international dark sky region that crosses an international border. Um, so the, this is just something that we're working on. The primary aspects of it, as I mentioned earlier, is to develop a lighting management plan for each of the land management areas and the facilities that they're responsible for. And part of that uh, lighting management plan also is the development of a communication plan of how we will provide programs for the public to let them know about this issue in terms of trying to minimize light pollution and also working with municipalities and interested parties. But the one thing that I want to be, uh, make very clear is that there is no requirement once we get these designations for any adjacent municipalities or adjacent residents to change anything at all. However, um, we hope that it starts a conversation and that people begin to think of it as a resource that they should be mindful of. For instance, if you change light, and I don't know what the lighting is like in Rainier here, I apologize for that, but as we update or change facilities, that we keep that in mind, so. I got I a couple questions on that. Uh, with this initiative uh, being in its 
Is it a federal thing? Is it a combination of that? The International Dark Sky Association is actually uh, just a group of people, from what I understand, that got together to that recognize the importance of trying to maintain natural night skies to the greatest ex extent possible. I will say, from what I understand, some of them are former Park Service and Forest Service and different uh, federal agency the, the reason employees. I say that we're, we're in the process right now of trying to uh, do something with our street lighting here and in in our municipality, oh. and I'm wondering if the feds were attached to it. There may be a grant program or something like that attached to it. Uh, pools, you know, uh, and so. Well, if we have to conform to certain things to. If there's certain things that the community wants to try to implement, uh, we do. The National Park Service has a natural sounds and night sky division office out in Fort Collins, Colorado. When I say division, it's three people. But um, they actually help communities, municipalities, uh, looking at uh, different uh, equipment that they should be considering and things like that. Well, that's, that's what I'm yeah. looking in, in for, you know, we don't know what we're doing, but I know that's one of the things that sure. is yeah. on our list. Keep us in mind. And, and, that, and, and you hit on a key point there because the <laughs> night skies, uh, anytime something something implemented like that, and, and then if the park gets involved in that, yeah. one thing you'd have to worry about, people say, well, they're going to prohibit on certain nights campfires or something like that. Yeah. And, and you already touched on that, because saying you really don't have to change what you're doing. It's just going to be some initiative that you can take that would maybe turn down lights or whatever. Exactly. It's just really saying a, a commitment by us to say that as we change things as well, just like the communities do, we're going to be mindful of how uh, what type of equipment we put in there and stuff. But, yeah. Well, you know, as far as I'm concerned, I, 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 you, this, I these, both these projects have a lot of merit. Uh, uh, I know I'm in particular my son and daughter, son-in-law and daughter, they're really into biking and nothing else and that, so that's it's a plus. I know they'd be more than thrilled with these things. They probably know about them and that, but mm -hmm. and I, I really can't not take advantage of throwing in a plug for what I've heard, heard about lots is it, it, there's a, they, they would like to see yurts all the way up to Kettle Falls in a fat tire bike trail uh -huh. going up all the way to Kettle Falls and these two things could coordinate with it where you could hike in the winter all the way to Kettle Falls and stay in the yurts and then also bike in the summer on these same trails. So. Pretty big progressive project, but there, there's a lot of actually the, their their building home now and their their construction manager works in the Brainerd area. Uh -huh. He lives in the Brainerd area, and they established a lot of bike trails and everything mm -hmm. now. And, and it's that that tire biking, mountain biking, is really taking over. It's uh, you, and they got these yurts. Yeah, you got to wait behind it. I mean it. You literally can't get in because they're that popular. You I think that there's a lot of opportunities there. One of the things that I've been trying to figure out how to do is to have public meetings with the communities and try to say. I think that would be a great yeah. initiative that, that it just coincides with both these things because I can see that something like that taking hold. Yeah. And, and there's a lot of state and federal money to build these bikes and yeah. bike paths and stuff like that. Great tourism draw from what this guy's telling me. It's It's, it's just wildfire in you know. that Brainerd area and that, so I can't see that with the Duluth too. Yeah, yeah the, the large, they got that big bike park to do. Yeah, so so I think you're you're, you're just on the on, on the just the, the cutting edge of what is really something that's gonna be taking place. So I'm glad you guys are supporting it. I gotta think we gotta be you know endorsing it okay. and, and, and helping it any way we can. I know um, the hope is that the Bike the Heart uh, events not only will be um, posted on the internet so that if somebody's just looking for biking opportunities, they go out and they do it on their own, but it will be an annual event. And also the group of people that we've been talking about or talking with have been kicking around the idea of what could we do for a, a fat tire winter biking opportunity too. Um, this year we're probably just going to take on this and see how we do, mm -hmm. but in subsequent years it might be a possibility. Well, I mean, he's a real enthusiast uh, and, and uh, they're trying to organize events in correlation with other things they have going on, so <coughs> certainly they would help. Oh, sure. Yeah. And, you know, it, it does my heart good, too, that see, I know we contribute to these heart of the continents and things like that. 
and you wonder if there's you ever get any value out of some of this stuff and that. So I'm glad to see that at least you've got a project that you're throwing out there. And well, I know what that, the, you know what I mean, and I don't know what else you've done that I can yeah. remember or anything else. So I'm really glad to see that there's regional support, not just you know local support for things like this, but mm -hmm. it's regional effort, and I think that's what we have to do to to be successful. We yeah, have to yeah. look at a bigger bigger the bigger picture and draw them in, and we all get a piece of the action. Yeah. Well, it helps with the economy. Do you got lodging and? Oh yeah, I mean it's uh, I mean go fishing and yeah. everything together. It's something for us to do too. So yeah. even, if, even if you get nothing out of it, but but the citizens of this area get to a, enjoy something. That's a big plus. I had to fly back from Minneapolis today and I sat next to a lady from North Carolina. South Carolina. Mm -hmm. sorry. We made that clear she was from South Carolina. Yeah. She's here to go to the Ely Bear and the or 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 bear and the Ely Wolf. Yeah. But she also had heard about this already. Oh, cool. And she's a photographer. Yeah. And she's very interested. She wants to come back and get the northern lights up here and different right. things. So I mean that's all the way from North Carolina or South Carolina, so it's out there and there's an interest. Well and that's a great thing, you yeah. know. Once we get the designation, that just gives us a bump for that year or two yeah. um, after we announce it and everything. And, and then, of course, there's going to be that percentage that come back every year because of the hey, opportunity. Hey, everything started. The, you, know, the first, you need the first one to get things started. Yeah. That Mike, he, uh, I think his name was Mike Badu, something like that. Okay. And his wife worked for the park, whether she still does. But he started this biking from the falls to Black Bay. Oh. And uh, then he was killed cleaning his roof off. Oh. And, uh, oh, yeah, he's from Birchdale. Yeah. We have, he, mm -hmm. yeah. We, uh, before your time, he'd come in, he's 30 miles out of town, and he'd bike oh. to work. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so no, it's a great facility out there. A lot of, I see a lot of people using it, especially on the weekends. And things, so. Well, we. I make a motion. I support. I'd like a recommendation and we a motion to support. I made it. I'll make a motion and we. I'll second the motion to support all this. We have a recommendation to second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? So carried. Thanks. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Good job. Oh, I love it. Yeah. I need to get my boat out. I've been procrastinating. I've been busy the last couple of weekends and stuff. But this weekend, getting my boat out of storage and getting them ready to get out on the water. And you got time yet. Summer's not too long. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for your time. Yeah. Thank you. And there are additional copies up here for you going. Uh, the next order of business then is to review the Coochie County forfeited apportionment uh, allegations. Do you guys have a copy of those? That's just informational. It's just informational. Yeah. Um, just just to see what. How much do we end up with? Um, same as we do every year. $6,300. See, uh, speaking of that, has there been any other uh, movement on, on, uh, on that? You know, uh, I haven't heard anything on the railroad thing. No, that not the railroad, railroad but power the power transmission line. Uh, is it we had got an email, what, about three, four months ago now, probably, and it's um, they're just kind of waiting to see how it all shakes out because it was going into court. Well, the other people are going into court to, uh, yeah. to uh, They don't want to pay as much as they yeah, should. Or the, the assessment, but not the assessment. The assessment but it, the first check we're supposed to receive is sometime in 2020, but I guess we'll find out how it all okay. shakes out. Right. Yeah, we'll, we'll figure that out. Is that right? It's the, the guy who's spearheading that is the gentleman out of uh, Norfolk, and he emailed us when he has any new information, and I haven't heard anything in about three months, maybe four months. Is that pretty close to completion? Right. It's getting closer. It's getting close, yeah. The, the, it's supposed to be done like the end of 2019, and then our first check is going to be 2020. And what that check is going to be, I have no idea. OK, to, to review the 2018 first quarter lodging tax collection, uh, again, information on how much to collect in lodging, probably not much to first quarter. Um, no, not much, Four, about $480, which it's, you know, most of ninety-five percent of it's distributed to um, the CVB. So that's how um, 
On, on the lodging tax, what is the lodging tax? What is the rate of lodging? Is it like a dollar a room, two dollars a room? Is it percentage it's, um, of the bill? It's three percent of the of bill. The bill yeah. So in other words, if you got a hundred dollar room, it'd be three bucks, or two hundred dollar room, is six bucks. Yeah. So I see the first one on the list. There's never any no reply. What's Correct. The never a reply. Correct. Doesn't think it. Correct. Applies to her. Correct. Yeah. So what do we do about that? You know, I was going to bring that up. Uh, I think in our ordinance, was that county or was is this a county tax? It's a city ordinance. It's a city it's ordinance. A, mm -hmm. We could certainly make a recommendation to include uh, to include RV parks because I think they, that was. You would have to change the ordinance, and that's we would have to change saying. the. I mean, that's, I mean, that's not. What we're talking about. Yeah, that's not included in the way it's all written. So yeah. that's something we'd have to look into. Uh, is that something we can amend? I am not. sure. Sure. Do you know, Joanne? I feel like that it comes from us. I don't, I'm not sure. It's from the CVB board, right? You, you know, I think maybe that's something, Joanne, you could ask. Yeah, I, I would yeah. like to, I'd like to that because also there's an RV park opening up and there's other things. So I'm not always a proponent of tax, but I, I don't think it's fair that some people are paying a tax. Well, myself. we have yeah. quite a few so on this list yeah. that seem to report honestly and blah, blah, blah. Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. But, but, it, it, ain't, it, it ain't that a dish on this, but, but if they're not required, I fair point should see and, and, and see if they're all. Yes. So bring that up and yes, see if RV will. parks and other people who are included into the taxing, uh, <coughs> room tax, lodging tax, and how you amend it if there are some that are excluded, obviously there are. Well, I guess you can ask right there. off the bat is Arnold's got the RV park in town. Is he, he wouldn't be on our list, but is he paying something? I guess find out. It would be a fair playing field then. Yeah. I know that we would have to amend our ordinance yeah. because I, in looking back at it, right, um, there's some mm -hmm. information there about that. the CVB that. board, so they yep. have to no, decide. Okay. You, you take it to the CVB board and then we'll, we'll maybe get to it. Yeah, yeah. And then maybe get yeah. it. Maybe, oh, maybe at the council meeting we can look at maybe adjusting, making some adjustments. But the, the tax applies to rentals that are 30 days or less. Yeah, and she signed a paper saying she does not rent. For less than 30 days. For, for more than 30 days. We went, I think when I first got on the CPB, yeah, we kind I, of I, I, I understand that, that. but then, then there has to be some kind of monitoring because obviously you see people where you take that by the month, it's because he rents them off by the month and then they come in the next month and rent again. There's ways, I mean, there is a, there's a procedure in there that you could go audit the, the property owner's books. I mean, if that's the path that. We want to do it. No, it's just the idea. I understand that yeah. 30 days stuff. I think this goes back to the next to month. Joanne going to the CDP yeah. board and yeah. find out exactly we'll where all that. We'll do that and then bring that situation up with it. Just because they're renting by the month, is that uh, certainly that's like arm's length, okay. uh, like an arm's length transaction. It's got to be a little more clarified than that. Okay, moving on then. Uh, the liquor store operating statement. Jen. Net sales are up from last April. The net profit is still down, but there are two reasons for that. Uh, you gotta remember, we spent $1,000 on sending me to the conference, which was um, well worth the cost. I learned quite a bit. Um, we also paid for a DJ, and we had some floor tile replacement amongst that. Um, so your, your cost of going to that conference come out of the net profit, so compared to a year ago, that would have even been that much better that you're better than you were a year ago on gross profit. We are. Or net yeah. profit, I should say, for the month of And, and net sales. I mean, so we did improve. So you enjoyed going to the conference then? Yes, and I'd like to thank you for pushing me to go to that because I, I did learn a lot. I think you should go every year. I, I agree. <laughs> I if believe. you look at the end what of the summary things that you very high, which is what we would have brought that down and would have showed a profit. Yeah. Well, no, not necessarily. Um, the, the one thing I did learn at the conference in which I was trying to tell you guys a few months ago was that you really want to order by the case. You don't want to split your case. No, costs. you want to order by the case. Yes. It's cheaper by the case. It is. And especially when you have an on sale, which you do more exactly. on. 
uh, ordering by the case, it, it knocks your cost of the bottle down immensely. Three pours out of that bottle is paying for that bottle. You order that by a bottle or half a case. You have you to have buy by a case. You, you do. Case. And, Period. And that's, that's why the inventory is a little higher. I agree with you 100%. I mean, it's, it's going to, you know, come May, I'm not going to have to order as much because we have extra. But it really does, it will balance out once we get the we get a system. Yes, yeah, yes, so absolutely. It costs, it costs more money if you buy by the half a case that doesn't it make Half sense. a case is just killing Especially us. Especially with what you have over there, it doesn't make sense. And you have room for storage? Oh, we have enough. Sure. We're, what I'm doing right now, we're, we're doing just fine. I always order by the case. Don't Did, um, I see there's some legislation uh, uh, about some breweries and stuff. Is that is that going to affect municipal liquor? Have you anything on that? They did cover a lot of that. It was kind of above my head. I tried to take as many notes as I could, mostly for you to look at. Um, but I do have all the notes. I should have made copies. I apologize. Yeah, I'm I'll get them to you. If, if there's anything here that may affect it, there's some legislation going on that affects breweries, distilleries. Uh, I'm sure any, it's all about liquor, you know, and I didn't know. I don't, I don't think it, it, I don't it, it think didn't it has really anything to do with it. It really doesn't, but there are some things we need to watch for. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, none of that got in there this yeah, year. Yeah, what I read on it, it has nothing to do with on off sale liquor, it's all the distillery types. Yeah, stuff. I know there's some, there, there was some, um, some, some action on the, on the breweries. We're really having some heavy discussions about that. There's some, pros and cons, and, and there's one group favoring. That was on the breweries, not the distillery, but right. on the breweries there was some issues being raised by the distributors mm -hmm. and, and people like that. They had some major concerns, so from what I understand, but they didn't know if there was anything that might have affected the on and off city or, you know, or municipal, so. Okay, well that's good enough. Um, what do you have planned for this coming, anything coming up for this month? Well, the month that we're in, our Cinco de Mayo was a great turnout. Um, we brought in some new flavors. Right now, the Millenniums all want to change. They don't want the usual everyday, you know, choices. So we kind of, that's another reason why our inventory is a little higher is because the Millenniums, they want all this new product. And we brought in all these new flavors of margaritas for Cinco de Mayo, and they sold. And we're still selling them afterwards. I'm, really? Yep. That's so, you got it. Yep. I know your <laughs> Yep. So that was really I mean, fun. It's a good idea. Um, I mean, that standard, you know, you have to introduce a product whether it works or not. I mean, you see it in restaurants all the time and all your chains say they only right. ribs or chicken nuggets or who knows what it is. And then if it, it shows satisfactory results, well, and so I think we we'll probably have to just keep doing that. We stepped out of our element. We, we held a painting class. <laughs> it, it brought 20 females in nice. for a Monday night. So our, our Monday night sales increased. It was great. Um, I asked the artist if she'd come back in the fall when we're quieter and see if we can boost that up again. So she's going to look into that and try to come back in the fall. So I think it'd be fun. You just need to plant something during the hunting season. That's what I'm thinking, you know, when the females are at home. It could be a <laughs> hunter's widow painting. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. And, you know, she likes to go around and help all the other businesses out, too. So it could be a lot of fun. How about our taxi situation? <laughs> is that working fine now? Our taxi situation? Um, I see we did have a charge. Was it $17? $17. So one or two people didn't utilize it. That means somebody used it and we didn't have to spend $600 for nobody to use it. Exactly. Yeah, you're I right. I thought it was a good idea. Yep. Well, on, that, that. on that note, Cheryl has actually uh, taken a position of, uh, of trying to contact both Uber and Lyft. And, She's in correspondence now with Lyft, so that might be another option that if if something like that would be and municipalities have to make that reach uh, out to the to those companies to see if they're interested in maybe for pushing that service available to our area. So yeah, she's in the process of doing that. She's had correspondence with them. Uh, that that would, again would be another option if something like that showed up. So this is something that's out there. So. Okay. Um, I mean, otherwise, my advisory board is, you know, full of young staff, and they have got some great ideas. I don't know if you've driven by and noticed the signs outside. That was their idea. Let's start promoting the dates out there so everyone knows, okay, on this weekend, we're going to have something going on here. Let's not make plans to go out of town. Um, they've had some new ideas. 
Uh, when, is, when is your next meeting? I'd like to, to come. Absolutely. Um, we do it, we're going to do it quarterly, so it won't be again until probably July or August. Just we can do it. Absolutely, yes. Um, the more the merrier. I mean, it's just volunteer, but if you have ideas, you know, throw them out there. Um, you know, uh, that conference taught me a lot about the marketing side of it, and, um, you know, they say to really focus on the social media. I know we talked about that in my evaluation, um, but I think we have started, you know, putting it out there more. They focused yes, on that's like free that. advertising and Open just... Open it up and I see it. And yep. Like, yeah. Took a lot of notes on that. Um, you know, just on marketing and specials and, and the bundling. They focused a lot on bundling. So that's kind of our um, thing now is how much can we bundle. And then I guess I'm going to end with, uh, I just slowly started to focus on Rainier Days. I've got the band book that's already done. You know, um, got a DJ. i got two DJs I'm trying to decide between. I don't know if we should try some <coughs> old, what everyone likes. August 10th, I believe. No, 11th, whatever that weekend is. Second weekend in August. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> August 9th and 10th, though. Yeah. So I'd like to get a jump on that so I'm not running around like a chicken with its head cut off at last moment. <coughs> well, any, any more questions for Jen? You can get a uh, recommendation on that. Motion to approve. Second and motion. You got a recommendation to second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? So carried. Thank you. Thanks, Jim. Nick. Yeah. Well, I know you had water leaking. You got that fixed. Yep. Yeah, had another we, break over at the Dukes. That's we fixed. Saw that. We had pretty hard not to see it. <laughs> <laughs> Today? No, I don't think that's good. Last week. Same here. Probably on the board. Same spot I built before. Just another stress track. And we also had that guy, uh, the erosion at uh, Dale Johnson's. Dale Johnson's is, is done and of the uh, extensions that, on it. Is that uh, done Marty his Ross. satisfaction? Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. Yeah, that's I was going to ask you guys too. Do you think possibly we should maybe write something up, get him to sign off on this? This could turn into a every spring, know. every time it rains kind of thing. Uh, He's really happy with it. But just talk to him and then say if you're happy with it, you know. I don't think we have to write anything up. Okay. I, I think we'll look at it. Uh, Water comes out there, you might need a river out there. Yeah. It might take a year for it to settle again. Yeah. You know. Well, it wasn't so much settling it. The runoff. We didn't have it. Yeah, we did have it. That's the river out at the end of the culvert. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the runoff ran and it washed out a little bit of the beach. And yeah. Stuff. It was it, it was a real I think that should be good. It's up to his satisfaction. Yeah, the guy did an awesome job on it. He liked it. So. And, uh, Anything else? Uh, what about hockey boards? We were, we were talking about having a game plan for those hockey boards. I talked to Dave Carter and he's supposed to get me a price together. I haven't got it yet. Because then we have a, a game plan was going to be like August. We were going to have a plan to get it before this winter. Or... Yeah. Yeah. What, yeah. what, what you got to do, Nick, because it, you know, we have some funding available, mm -hmm. but we'll probably have to try to solicit it, uh, several quotes uh, items. <laughs> Murder, yep, I talked to Dave. As many as you can get, but you know, there's a couple of recommendations out there that people like could probably give you names for because do that, yeah. You know, I thought we had set a date by August when we were going to be ready to run with it. So yeah, so we got to get some. You're here, Jack. All right, Todd. So that's right. I'll give you some names and see if you can get a quote for what we're. Yeah. Uh, you know, that's almost that we should almost try to formulate. Uh, Basically, at least a general conception of what we want, and then get it, get their detailed plan, and only do it basically, a, you know, a couple of footing around the whole thing. And, you know, however, did you get any recommendations from anybody? Have you talked to anybody? Uh, you know, Mike Heibel would be a, a good one if not, if not necessarily for a four. But Mike said, talk to Dave. Dave's done like four rinks, I guess. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So Dave would probably give you a really good, you know, again. I, Great, but I think just just because of where we are, you know, we'll, we'll 
consider. Yeah, that. yeah, that's we true. Make sure that when we get this, that we're at least comparing apples to apples and how we do it. That this, you know, because that you say he, I, I agree that he probably knows what probably what's going on. on. Even talk with Larry Foss just to get his opinion on it. Yeah, I never thought of that. That's a good idea. He'd probably turn around and say the same thing, but mm -hmm. maybe but not. Doesn't hurt to, doesn't hurt to throw it in here. I helped us a lot with this one. one. The other one was, I think it was Terry Harlow. Terry well, Terry Terry's obviously not a contractor, but he, he's very knowledgeable. Yeah. Yeah. But there, there's a lot of people out there. Mm -hmm. So uh, basically, you should just keep talking to see what type of uh, Project we have, whether it's a two foot foot in or one, one foot deep, two foot wide, general, the general uh, link with the you know, general requirements. And then when we go talk to somebody, we, we know what we're looking for. You know, you don't want to have one guy give you one that's a foot wide and the other one's been something that's two. Right. The general well, requirements. Apples to apples. Well, that, that's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm more concerned that. I have the plans from Beck Arena Parks that it needs. And the reason I went and talked to Dave first is he actually has them same ones. It's a matter of him just giving us a number. He has them on his desk of what it'll require to put them he's boards done up. Mm -hmm. Well, there's, a, there's actually an architectural plan with them. Of yeah, that, yeah. You know, why it has to be in yep. points. Well, that, that's fine. Based on that plan, that's what we want to make sure we, we're all talking the same animal there. That's all. So, uh, that's good because I think as a thing, we're required to, you know, I don't know if we're required to, but it's always a good practice. Try to get multiple quotes or one yeah. quote, but we certainly want to make sure the quotes are. Yeah, I'll make a couple phone calls in the morning to see what I was like. I'll talk okay. to Larry. And then, uh, what about the, the, I don't know what the, is it sand or whatever we put in the, the park under the wood chips? Wood chips or whatever we do under the slides right. and, the, yeah. and the swings and everything. Yeah. That needs to be. Brought up a little bit. Yes, and actually, I should do that. Now it's 11%. Off. I think we could have removed the wood chips and put yeah. fresh sand in. It needs in. new fabric underneath there. It's supposed to be wood chips. Wood, yeah. And yeah, wood chips are better than gravel, I think you're saying. Yeah, yeah I think we decided that. Why? Well, well, you know, there's a fabric underneath there. You're going to have weeds coming right through there. Going to have them anyway. <laughs> they break down. That good stuff from Showbox. It lasts about five years. I just so okay. so to get the right yeah. stuff. Yeah. Um, um, so. Have you, uh, maybe, maybe uh, Nick, that's something where we get the wood chips. You know, I know from time to time we've been able to talk to somebody at PCA and they've given us some, they get some that end no. up, but they could, they could send quality. their quality or contaminated a little bit that's or something, whatever, big that they quality. don't use it, but it's certainly fine for that. Maybe we can check with somebody at PCA. Uh, I, I can. I can uh, do Lauren that. Lyman has been a real good one as far as helping okay. with things like that. Um, that would be my suggestion to start with. I mean, it is a whole bunch of, you know, dump truck load full or something, so I'm sure I'll go a long way. Take a long ways. That stuff goes a long ways. So um, maybe you can check with that then. Um, okay. Corner potties. It's time. Mm -hmm. the, the park's getting overrun, and they start knocking on my door, it's time. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yep. <laughs> so let's get I'll call Crandall. I can call Crandall. <laughs> Tarek. Oh. Yeah. Tarek. We might want to set yeah. a rule of thumb the more Mother's Day weekend. Probably, if the weather's nice, we should probably just have them out there. Sure. The park was overrun this weekend. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we may as well start saying that the opening day efficient season is for the top toilet. Sure, right there. Same thing. Yeah, weather for me. Yeah, weather permitting, but it's bad. Yeah. Go ahead, Bob. Uh, Melton Bill, you I walk by his house every day. He's got a culvert that's crushed down on the one end. He said something about we ran over it. And Get a leak. Tell him when he cleaned up his yard. We, up his we did not run it over. Okay. No, that was just replaced. No way. It's, 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 it's a. It, it's a it's new a culvert under his driveway the county just put in. It was not us. It was not the county. There's no way. Well, anyway, we want to know if we could maybe pull it out a little bit so the water will run through it. Well, certainly. Uh, it, it, that's right. If it's caved in on the end, Nick, maybe you can't hook a chain onto it and lift it. I'll, I'll look at it. I'll look yeah, at it. Yeah, all you have to do is take the bucket. You put, you know, you, 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 actually what I've seen really good, it's probably a 12-inch culvert or 15, 15 probably. 
inch culvert. Yeah, it's about a 16. Yeah. It's probably a 15 inch culvert. What I've seen work really good is, is if you can get a small pipe inside of it and put the chain around a small pipe, and as you lift it, that, that culvert will come back to a lot of, a lot of times it's shape. I probably you just hook on it with a, a chain and you're going to get, you know, so if you can get a, a small piece of duct iron pipe or something, we have some over at our ready mix plant, a small chunk uh, uh, pipe, just stick one inside and then as you pull on that it gives it, it'll help bring it back to form. We don't want any ditches plugged in, I don't care who ran over the end. Oh no, we can open it up, let's see, get it opened up. Yeah, I'll go look at it. And then uh, tomorrow we're pulling the pumps out of the lift station, we have something going on with them, it fried some wires, so we I'll address you guys when I know more, we're going to take the pumps out on what we have to do. Is one, but with that, is one cycle more than the other? Yep. One's, one's probably on its last leg and we should consider changing them before the hotel and distillery is in play. Because if anything backs up, then there's going to be some serious well, trouble. Most of the time, those pumps are, well, look at it, the 90 time percent of the pumps, most of it is just the impellers. Really, the pumps last almost forever, but the impellers go to hell. And so that's why when they quit pumping, then one will run a lot more than the other one, but could be electrical, could be in the panels. We do know the impellers, we do know the impellers in rough shape on the one. Well, yeah, those are tear tear out in your place. You don't know until we tear it out right now. Yeah, so, we, you know. Well, I'll just keep you guys informed on that. Yeah. Uh, also, let's see, what else was here? Uh, first gravel, everything. Oh, um, Nick, uh, they are going to be doing a little more excavation work by the distillery. Mm -hmm. I was going to talk to you today. Um, there, there, there's a, I was back there looking in behind Paul Beck's. There's about four or five willow trees left. Um, I, I don't need you to take the willow trees down, but there's two or three of them that are totally dead. You know what I mean? Dead, dead. I do want you to remove the dead ones, not the live ones. When I say dead. Mm -hmm. And uh, being that they, 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 they close, that, that's a snowmobile trail and it probably end up being an ATV trail plus or a city alleyway. And you can see they're hanging over that way. So any of them dead okay. ones, I, I want you to cut the dead ones down. And I could ask anybody any permission or anything else simply because they're an immediate threat to oh, the public. So just, just take them down because trying to get permission may take us once if not years and, and they are I know I know which ones you're talking so about. Just clean it up, take a few of them we down do that. And, and just go through there and, and just and dispose of them. Sure. And uh, uh, yeah, we have nothing else to give anything else. I have a question. What, what with all the with this thing with the biking going on through here and more people using the bike trail, trail is there a water option either at the park Drinking water, drinking water. Yeah. Boy, that I don't know. Well, the park must have fountains, but yeah, I don't have works. any bottled water. No, I mean, it's so, so somebody can come and fill up their water bottle on the bike and go. You know, maybe that's a good question. Where I, I, I really, I really do. <laughs> no, but, uh, well, I just was just thinking that people come and ride through here all the time. And right. Where we've got that one gazebo down here that's not being used. If we had a water hook up there that where they could get water, I don't care yeah. if it's a spigot. Yeah. But if somebody yeah, could get a water bottle, yeah. water, or yeah. I, I just was on a refill yeah. station. Yeah. I mean, they're going to put a tire fixing station along here. And I'm sure they'd like the hot sunny day or something like to have some water. You know, that's, that, that's a good good question there. Well, we're, maybe we should ask the ask the county or something. I don't know if it you know, get too complicated, but in one of these stations here, actually, just a, a like you say, a, a hose filling station. So yeah. I, I do know they are going to have a you know fix a tire station. Mm -hmm. so, that, that's that's if nothing else, we might. Because I know they're going to be asking, and I've been asked already. How come you don't have water on that trail? The real second bridge is. Yeah, that one's really that was put in. They had both utilities, water and sewer, exposed when they poured the foot in for it. Huh? Yeah. Thank you. I guess this is, we may go bring this up, but you know, Wilbur, you brought that to our attention a while back, and, and, and we looked at it, both me and you. Uh, we may, may want to consider 
doing some work on that municipal dock here too. Oh, yeah. um, well, you know, we, we talked about maybe buying some floaters and, and looking to see. Mm -hmm. uh, for Arnold, I don't know if there's, it must be, you know, uh, you know that L&L &L contracting, that's the leg and then uh, Lind uh, 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 Lindbergh. Lindbergh, yep. They, yeah, I do know them. They, they may give you a yeah. report on, uh, on the footage this too. Is job. But you, you, you might want to talk to them about, you know, because they're building docks and capital all over. Uh, good mm -hmm. young energetic kids. Because the only other ones I know, like the Spalls and Lumber, they make them, but you've got to Yeah, in this L&L, they go out and build them. I can talk to Kurt, I know pretty well. Kurt, 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 or, or, yep. or, 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 um... Uh, it's a leg Nick. Nick. Nick, there you go. Yeah. Either one of them, because I think just two of them, you want to build a couple of places for something you want. Yep. <coughs> what they might say to do. Or what we want. Maybe you look at it and just come up with some okay. idea. Maybe if we can get three, four of them in there, you know, you got boats on both sides, you know, two, three people each side, that's another 10 or 12, 15 people. Well, I'm thinking, I think those, they come in uh, 20 foot, 24, 26, when I checked that falls longer. Yeah, you, you And do. you can get two of them and you can get. Yeah, you, you'll want to put a couple 24 foot dock out there, some because the boats, you know, they're now a 20 foot boat's not a small boat, they're 21 footers all over the place, you know. So, yeah. Okay, well, check that out, call that one now and see. Yeah. Or, or Arnold, too, I think he looked at one time but ne never did get back to us. I, don't know there. Well, hey, I think he was supposed to have, I, I think he got a price out of us, but those pre built ones, but yeah. they were way too high. Right? Yeah, that was over at Falls Home, and they were like 3200 bucks a piece. That's so great. Okay. I, I think I looked at Fort Francis, too. You could buy them right around the 3200 for Canadian in Fort Francis. Because right. someone needs to put the pipelines in. Yeah, and well, what, to whatever it's going to take, we have to kind of look to see what... There's just more to it than just tying up a dock. You know, there's ramps going to it, and so they might give you some suggestions or something. Mm -hmm. That's for sure. Just food for thought. Okay, anything else for Nick? Thanks, Nick. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Uh, okay, uh, for instance, the county 130 update. I talked about the construction on that. They, they plan to start the, uh, right after Memorial Day on that. The week after Memorial. Right after, he's told me, uh, right after Memorial. The week, the week after. after. So uh, which week could be the Monday, though. So you're not saying the 28th, you're saying 3rd of June. Correct. And then, yes, yeah, after Memorial. And then WSN's going to have to stay before. Yeah, the yeah. Day. And, and yeah. Um, uh, WSN right now is doing some work uh, to bring, uh, I'll throw that in there right now, WSN is doing some work for the, I believe for the county also on some of their, their projects, you know, uh, we've got some parking uh, uh, propositions uh, into the county and I think they, they may be taking over that. Uh, I was talking to Trent Nicholson this morning, so there may be some, I don't know, what course you can give any if it's just carrying the plans forward or something like that. So that is moving along. Um, they got some tentative plans out there. The county board still has some not decided whether they're going to go through state aid or for or, um, maintenance funding. Uh, I think if the project gets bigger than what they think it is, then they may go to state aid route, which takes a few more weeks if it's a uh, Unit uh, maintenance funding, basically they just approve it. Mm -hmm. They don't have to get the state approval of it. They'll still be designed under the state criteria, but it, it, they just don't have to go through the state aid engineer. So that that's in the works. Um, you know, it's progressing pretty good. Uh, I've seen some preliminary stuff on it. It looks good. Uh, I think it's going to be a big big help. Uh, like 130, I can see that. It looks in great shape right now. Uh, and of course, we had that little issue with the runoff by Johnson's that, again, with the new pipe and the rip racket, we've got that taken care of. We have an excellent spring, so I can't, can't say it. I know it, with the blacktop and the, and the new ditching, that it'll be done. But by the way, Nick, I, I talked to Mr. Bowman too, because uh, most that dirt will balance. When I say balance, what what they do is they see they take it from one side, move it to the other, move it around the job, so there's not a whole lot of extra or uh, to remove from the site. Yeah. But if there is, um, 
we may want to just talk about a few loads of the fill. I mean, it'll just be black dirt, it won't be gravel or nothing. But you may want to put a few loads of fill. I don't know what you have on stockpile if you have any. But then, no, okay, you, you know, you get a hole in Bobby's backyard or something that has to be filled. Yeah, put the gravel or rock in there so then you can use that fill. Who knows where we need it? We get a sinkhole or we get some slope that needs a widening or some cover or something. So um, when they start that construction, we will talk to them if they have any. You know, we just want to make sure now that that's a city street that they're not hauling excess heavy loads down there or anything, but in decent weather and if they get you a few loads stockpiled for future projects, to make sure we get some of that taken care of. You know, on 130 on the south side edge, is that water flow going to go across the road at all, or is it all going to go up towards the rock? Uh, nothing flows towards the rock. Well, it does because there's no culvert going across there. Well, I believe there is a culvert going across. There's two going across. Now? Yeah. 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 There have been for, have been for since no, uh, October, November. Yeah, they're, they're, there's a culvert there, Bob. What it's going to do is come down, start by just below the rock, you know, at the top of the hill, and on, the, on the west yeah. end, yeah. All on the, the south north. side, mm -hmm. and it, it'll continue down to Rasmussen's. At Rasmussen's, that little bit crosses the road there, and then it goes through uh, that culvert that we installed. Now I'm talking about by Rasmussen's home there. Yeah, there's a call, there's a big pipe right there yeah. and that follows North Street down to the crack. Yeah, because I know the water used to really hang on that area because the ground starts going up to up to the rock. You know, I, I guess you, you is that on the that's on the that's on the east end that pipe that got on the east end. end. Yeah, <clears throat> obviously they they got we'll we'll see how the ditch is dug, but the, it does, the outfall, outfall, everything will flow back to the outfall and cross it just on the east side of Scooterman's property. There's a culvert going across the road yep. there. So, you know, I, I figure it'll either go, be going back there or it will be going up to um, the county road here. So I don't know if there's a break in the grade without the plans in front of me, but I, I know it'll, it, it's designed to drain. So uh, that rock that you'll yeah. see right there across from the outfall, I, I talked to Carl about that. That that will be exposed. That'll actually look kind of nice, you know, rather than you know where they've got a clear ground now, so that rock will be exposed and it'll you know there'll be there's room for the ditch in there because there was one in there, so it'll look pretty good in there. Probably. So we'll see. We'll see. We're only put a month away, right? So okay. Uh, anything else? Bernard, do you have anything? Just a reminder that we're leaving the radio on Sunday the 19th, two o'clock. At the rink. Hope it don't rain. What, 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 can, can you explain that to, to Dennis? I don't think. What, 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 um, the Red Club years ago would have an annual clean up day right here, and we're trying to bring that back. Sure. So we have, um, we have four people take the initiative to have like, each area of Old Rainier, Jameson French, and the other side of the tracks. So and that is when? Saturday? Sunday. Sunday? It's 2 o'clock. Are we going to do on both sides of the road up there? Not the highway, but the other section over there? there one Down one, one for French, one for Jameson, one for Old Rainier, and one for Brennan's corner of Burr. Right. Is, it, is, there, is the Red Club kind of Correct. working in coordination with Nick and everybody else? His cell phone right now. We got a trailer and a four wheeler in each area. And we're going to furnish the garbage bags. The city is. Yeah. I'm going to pick up the highway from Ditch, from Second Bridge. We're not having our people go on the highway. We were not comfortable because we are hoping that people bring their children, that we put activities on for them all year. So we want the kids to be Berta, you got her hand. Breck, you got her hand. I still need okay. that. Okay. okay. Uh, they got the, they so adopted that the highway. I think it, it, it looks like the, the mom of the neighborhood. Okay. And so they'll bag it, and the bags will be there, and Nick will go around on Monday and pick up the bags. No, no, we have trailers. I say, I would think Wilbur and his little buggy there yeah. would be in charge of something like that. <laughs> and now we're gonna I would go to bring one in too. Like then we're going to roast uh, hot dogs at the rink for everybody. Yeah, that's great. Yes, sir. Is it yes. just the like, trash on the side of the road and stuff like yeah. that? Yes. Okay, not other stuff. No, no. 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 just picking up your. We're trying to clean up at least the city limits. Uh, 
And, and that's okay. I'll, I'll the run. obvious trash. Litter. So if anybody wants to show up at 2 o'clock at the rain. 2 o'clock, yeah. 2 o'clock yes, at the uh, You know, they, 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 has anybody adopted the highway? Sorry, have you seen the Brecky couple on the highway? The Brecky yeah, family. Yeah. The Brecky family has some of the stretch out on Highway 11 here. Yeah, and I, I, think, I think it ends right where the, where the entrance to Rainier is, and then a mile that way and a mile back. I know they have that part of the highway. Okay. The Brecky family has that stretch here. Okay. You know, I, I basically I've watched that pretty good. I stopped and got a few bags on so you see something there. But, um, you know, it, it, overall, that, that state highway, from here to the second bridge is usually pretty clean. There's not too much. Do uh, yeah, you know what happened? No. All the water ran it to where Nancy Hill lives in Bones there. He's a deputy. The culvert across the bicycle trail, if you look, it's all in there. Cans, bottles, car door, everything. Okay, well, that, that's one thing. Uh, maybe we should call the county and see if they'll pick the county will monitor that, take care of that. You know, you, you know, I don't know. It's actually a state. It's a state highway. It's MnDOT supposed to be doing that. Yeah. Well, MnDOT would do that, but the, the county also owns the bike trail, and okay. they've been really good on the bike trail. So if you maybe just call Trent Stein back, or I don't know who's in charge. Now, Brad Crawley would send the guy out there to hurt me, but he's not there anymore. Okay. Yeah. No problem. There you go. See, not long enough. And stuff. <laughs> That's what I like, Bob. Thank you. Just like that. Okay. I'm not afraid of litter. Okay. I have, I have something there. I was approached by um, Lisa Saxton, who takes care of the um, concession stand at Holler for the International Falls Little League. And she's um, having, because she has a snow cone machine there, she's having to purchase the ice out of pocket for the snow cone machine. And she was wondering if the Rainier Liquor Store would be willing to donate four bags of ice a day. A day? A day. She for, goes for what? five days a week. How many? Tell me four. Tell me four. Me four. Do four bags a day. So I'm already donating to the resort. Okay, I didn't know that. So yes. I didn't know that. Tell her to call the fire department. Fire department. The, okay. fire, the International Falls Fire Department will give her all the ice she wants. Okay, so I didn't know that, Jen. As long as they have a bit of ice, they'll give it to them. She wants four she days. The Bristol's only taking one a day from us. Yeah, because she doesn't do Bristol, she just does holler. So they're two separate. Okay. Yeah, she but does one that she I does. think the point she's trying to make, how come she used four and the other day really because feel I think over at, park is, I think over at, at Holler, they're younger kids, and so they're they're buying her. She went through three bags of oh, ice she, the other day. She does talk to the fire department. They're usually pretty good at getting ice. Do they have a snowball machine? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe they don't. I don't know. That's why you don't want to ice. You know, I, I get a little, I'm not upset or anything, but... You read the snow cone machine, did she give them away? The snow cone? No. no. Well, well, why the hell is she asking for free ice? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, I sell gravel. He's passing for a dog. He's passing on. They're getting free ice. I hear it's like a quarter. You know, and is it a part of doing business? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Complete <It's a big> profit. <laughs> I'm not opposed to helping people, but when there's a commercial entity that's making money off the product, and they come, so that person that's doing it at Rizzo Field, the same thing, if they're charging for that stuff, that's the cost of doing business. Don't give them any more ice. I, 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 I'm tired of handouts for people that are charging for free, you know. I agree with you. I don't see you coming in here and offering a $100 five at Lake where hockey doesn't give us no five thousand dollars for whatever coming here and so no okay. <laughs> if you're charging for something better figure your cost in it if you got to charge for the ice there's no there free no chicken gizzards but, yeah, but isn't that something to do with the and i asked the question you certainly may um, do we donate to the uh, Cemetery board. Because I've never really heard of there. One thing they, they, they never approached us, Bob. They never approached us. Uh, I don't know where they, uh, who, who's on it or anything else. Isn't it? But uh, again, uh, you know, 
you know, we could sit here all day and give to different organizations and everything else, but we do when you have a board, they have a way of figuring out how to get this done. But I, I'm not opposed to something like that, but you've never been opposed by a problem. Yeah, they've never come to a No, I don't, I don't know what their entity even is. Yeah. Well, they know they don't get enough money to pay the help. <laughs> Motion to adjourn. Got a recommendation. Got a second. You got one. Oh yeah, supposed to come back and work on 11 and finish that up. Uh, you know, uh, I now road restrictions were lifted today, okay. so I'm assuming none of the state highway work was going to even be allowed to be worked on until after road restrictions. Mm -hmm. So I would expect them any time. I'm, I'm not sure of that, but I do know they they got a lot of things to do there. It looks very good as far as what has to be done. They can go ahead and start doing that. Mm -hmm. And that's one thing too, Nick. I want you to pay attention. Uh, are we still got that water standing in that ditch? Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. Okay. okay. They, they tried to say that the culverts are in the act and there's always been water there. Well, that's not true. We mowed that ditch, and, and either that culvert's been put in at the wrong elevation. It has because he had it taken the bucket, and I've got troughs. Not just that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, I do oh, want. If you see the inspector here. Uh, uh, you can say there, there must be something wrong here. We mowed this ditch for years. This culvert has to be been installed at the wrong elevation because we got drainage in one side and water standing on the other. There, there's something wrong there. I, I told him that. He said, you know, we know these areas are wet. Well, remember, he, he wrote the letter back saying that. Mm -hmm. And that's just proper bullshit. And the ditches aren't uh, graded properly yet. I mean, there's yeah, yeah, and I'm not going to say that when it's done, all I want to say is we mowed these ditches before. There was no pond and standing water. We don't need an improvement that gives us standing water in the ditches. Not for breeding. You know what I mean? When it's supposed to be done by certified engineers and that. So, you know, I, I don't know. I'll, I'll get a chance to talk to the state inspector on that. I, so, I know the language they talk, so we'll figure it out. All right. And and the they are saying the works for she runs the uh, highway department here, and she said she thought it'd be June third. June third. Yeah. Right after Memorial Day. Then. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? Recommendation to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. I'll second. We got a motion and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.